Morning everybody, it's time for, hello there, welcome everybody, uh, it's time for morning prayer and just looking around, uh, I had the cat uh, um, a short while ago walking across the desk, that would have been entertaining for you as um, the cats go past the screen, I think she's disappeared now, so a bit, bit gloomy today but uh, I pray that you're not gloomy today and um, however you are that the Lord meets with you in our time of prayer um, so Tuesday the 14th of September and we'll begin the service as it's published in just a moment as you take a moment to gather yourselves I'd like to before we begin the words as they are there before us on the Church of England um, daily prayer app Let's still our hearts. Let's keep a moment's quiet. Let's become aware of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let's invite the Holy Spirit into our minds, our souls, our spirit. Lord Holy Spirit we ask that you'll minister to each one of us now as we turn to prayer we are encouraged through the word that when we don't know how to pray through Christ our Lord Amen O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God, the God of our salvation. With grief, your only son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. Holy Spirit, blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Begin our psalms today, and we have three psalms. And so I'm going to go to the third psalm, which is Psalm 146. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, will I praise the Lord. As long as, as I have any being, I will sing praises to my God. Put not your trust in princes, nor in any human power, for there is no help in them. When their breath goes forth, they return to the earth. On that day, all their thoughts perish. Happy are those who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps his promise for ever, who gives justice to those that suffer wrong and bread to those who hunger. The Lord looses those that are bound. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the stranger in the land. He upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turns aside. Or upside down the Lord shall reign forever your God O Zion throughout all generations hallelujah glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever 
Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made loincloths for themselves. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening. Because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent took me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals, and among all wild creatures upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a... Um, refrain a reflection before we come to the reading from John's Gospel based on the Song of Solomon many waters cannot quench love neither can the floods drown it set me as a seal upon your heart as, as a seal upon your arm for love is strong as death passion fierce as the grave it flashes are flashes of fire a raging flame Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If all the wealth of our houses were offered for love, it would be utterly scorned. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. And so we come to John chapter 12. Beginning at verse 27. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, 
so that the darkness may not overcome it. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we ask that you'll guide us as we consider your word this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We've all played, I'm sure, hide and seek when we were children. And we know um, how exciting that was when we were children. And, and especially if you didn't get found um, and, and just. You think you think of all the things that that children have sometimes and it's stuff like that or or playing with a cardboard box <laughs> which really entertained us and and um, still i'm sure entertain children these days but hide and seek we we have the account of the fall of the human race adam and eve in the garden of eden and the first response to their broken Before that they didn't, there was this sense of innocence where there was a perfect relationship with the Lord God. But suddenly everything is literally exposed and they feel ashamed. And it would seem that what happens in the Garden of Eden is that the Lord God on a regular basis walks in the garden. How do we know that? Because the text says they heard the sound of the Lord God in the garden. And, and I, I get the sense reading that, that um, Bible passage they know the sound of the Lord God because this is a regular event. The Lord's coming. It's the usual time that he comes to speak to us in the garden. It's in the cool of the day. And rather than running to the Lord God and embracing him, they hide because they're ashamed. This is what sin does. It breaks our relationship with God. It breaks our relationship with one another. It's a bit like the child and the parents, and the parent knows the child's done something and the child's ashamed to say. And they'll try anything, and sometimes... And so it is with the Lord God. He knows that there has been a change with Adam and Eve. Why are you hiding and naked? Who told you you were naked? The serpent did. What have you done? In Genesis um, chapter 3 that um, Adam and Eve tried to cover their sin. So we, we have these. An animal had to die. Something had to die so that Adam and Eve. Each of what the Lord will eventually have to do for us, that to have our dignity restored in the sight of God and our relationship restored to Him, we need to be covered. But not covered temporarily and the, there is the account in the old testament of later on the sacrificial system where every year there was a day of atonement and in between the day of atonement there were other sacrifices that could be made as sin offerings and guilt offerings and fellowship offerings and it was offering after offering after offering 
because the sacrificial system could never fully deal with the problem of sin. And the only way that sin could fully be dealt with is for somebody to take that sin upon themselves as a substitute. And here Jesus is talking in this passage in John's Gospel that, you know, he, he's preparing to go to the cross. And he eventually, and he will say elsewhere uh, in, in, in the Gospels, that um, just as he says to Nicodemus in, in chapter 3 of John's Gospel, you know, just as Moses lifted up an image of a bronze serpent, another serpent appearing there, um, and everybody who looked at that serpent was healed from the plague, there will be another lifting up. But it won't be a bronze serpent. In other words, it will be covered up, but not temporarily, temporarily with an animal skin, but for all eternity. And even for today, as we're watching this, you can have all the things that separate you from Almighty God, the things that we do. the covering that we get from God is forever and ever and ever. So today that your sins are forgiven as you put your faith in Jesus Christ who took your place on the cross. Amen. Lord help us to have open hearts to realize that in our place you stood condemned you bore our guilt, our shame, our pain. You bore everything that would separate us from the Father. You took it upon yourself. So that sin is paid for. Sin is dealt with. Help us, each one of us, to live in the freedom and the experience of that knowledge this day. Through the crucified, risen, and ascend the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Some words of uh, reflection in response. We adore you up God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. By your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. In the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old. His holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to say us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
Far be it from me to glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Going to pause, going to pray together. We've all got different things and um, responsibilities, different things upon our hearts, different things that concern us today. So we will bring them to the Lord. Father, we are reminded through the brokenness of Jesus on the cross that this is a broken world. been through his flesh it's an horrific picture of the devastation of sin but beyond that we have a wonderful picture of the risen and ascended Christ who is glorified and reigning on high for each one of us and so as we offer our prayers today we are praying to the risen and ascended, glorified Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King and the ruler of heaven and earth, the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Son of David, the Son of Adam. O oh Lord, today we bring to you those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for those who will serve, um, use the services of the new comfort zone, for those who use the services and for those who provide them. We pray for all those this day who are worried and concerned, for those who are unwell in body, soul or spirit, that you would ease their concerns and ease their pain. We commit to you the people close to us who need your help this day. We remember this parish and pray for your blessing on all the people in this community. For those who live alone, who are isolated. For those who are isolated because of COVID. We pray for families. We pray for married couples. We pray for all those who share homes together. That everybody who lives in this area would know that blessing which only comes from you. And with these we offer you our own prayers in the silence. Almighty God, who in the passion of your blessed Son made an instrument of painful death to be gladly suffer for his sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God. as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen may christ who bore our sins on the cross set us free to serve him with joy amen let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a wonderful blessed day and um, I'll see you soon. Bye folks.